God is good. All the time. Love you, Sarge. Hey, um, just real quick, I know the praise and worship team is already ready, praise God. But um, if, I can get your, uh, if I can get your attention just for a moment, just for a moment, I'm going to ask this lovely couple to stand up because uh, they're near and dear to our hearts. And they came to visit us before the marriage conference. Pastor Craig and Kareen Dunbar are here with us. They're right here in front. Amen. Hey, so beloved church family, please, please, please show them love. Amen. Um, one thing that you all don't know, I wasn't going to wait. Should, I, should we wait till do what? He, he gave me permission. God has opened a door for them in Alaska to pastor. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for that. Hallelujah. They're going to be pastoring in Alaska. Praise God. Alaska. That's beautiful now, right? Now hear my heart though. They were going to leave to get out to Alaska. But Holy Spirit, say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit led them to, to preach at the marriage conference. And right after the marriage conference, they're driving out back to Alaska. So I just want you guys to know how much they love you all. And um, we thank God for that. Amen. And we love you guys so much. Praise God. Um, I'll stop talking. All right, everybody stand up with us this morning. Hey, hey, I have another announcement. Praise God. Oh. Hey, TC, <laughs> where's your hey, beloved at? Huh? huh? TC, come up here too, man. Yeah. Hey, T hey, everybody give TC, Pastor TC, a round of applause. Hey, um. Pastor TC, his wife is in Camelsville. Be like that then. Great, great. Uh, hey, but, hey, Pastor TC, come up here, man. Uh, but Pastor TC is going to be speaking too at the marriage conference. And man, what a winner, winner, chicken dinner. We got two pastors here. Praise God. All right. Sorry, Pastor Tish. We're, we're good. Hey. All right. I the back of his shirt says, if you need prayer, ask me. Yeah. I love it. So anyway, will you open us up in a word of prayer yeah, this praise morning? Praise God. Father God, we love you. Lord, I'm just thankful I can feel your presence in this place. Holy Spirit, have your way in this service, touching each and every heart. Break our hearts of stone and make them soft. Moldable like clay in your hands, Father God. Lord, bless this worship team as they lead us into your presence. Let us get ourselves out of the way and hide ourselves behind the cross. And at your feet, Jesus. In Jesus' name and all God's kids said, Amen. Amen. All right, before we get started, um, we do not have any nursery workers today, so if I could have two volunteers that are members of the church and you've had your background check and all that done, we do need two people to work in the nursery. We got Miss Kay. Do I have anybody else that will help Miss Kay this morning? All right, we got two people. Thank you all, ladies. Appreciate it. revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart Sunday morning hallelujah and it's lasting all week long can you hear it can you feel it it's the rhythm of a gospel song won't you choose it you can't lose it and there ain't nothing there ain't nothing's gonna steal my joy i got an old church choir singing in my soul i got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful i 
I've got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Turn to mountains that I can't climb. Oh, you're with me, never leave me. And there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing that's gonna steal my joy. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that God's will be Cause he's all you'll ever need, all you'll ever need Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that God's will be Cause he's all you'll ever need, all you'll ever need I've got to know church choir singing in my soul i've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful i've got an old church choir singing in my soul i've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful i've got a heart overflowing because i've been restored there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy no, there ain't nothing's gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. All right, as we sing this next time, go around and welcome somebody here this morning. Okay. 
Children's time, all children, come on down front. Goodness, good morning. We've got an excited church this morning. And I'll note that all the kids are up here, so all the noise is coming from the grown-ups. That's definite. Now, I don't know if you guys can see me down there. Hello. Way down there. I'm trying to wave. I see Nevaeh. Now, it might help if you guys, you're more than welcome to stay there. But if you all want to see what I have, you might want to sit here in front of me. Thank you, Nevaeh. That way you all can see, because it might make more sense if you can see. Good morning. This is pretty awesome. Lots and lots of people. All right, so I'm going to hold up what I've got, and I'll hold it up so you guys can see down there. What? this yesterday at Walmart. Y'all like my new dog? Like my new stuffed animal? Can y'all see it down there? Can you see it? Got it? Isn't it great? I went to the Walmart yesterday and I found him and I thought he was so cute and pretty and new looking and here, smell him. Smell how good he smells. No. You smell him? I thought he smelled good. No? Oh, mm. You pray? No, thank you. Come here, Lincoln. <laughs> so what do you all think? You all like my new dog? No? It's old. <laughs> so I, I've got some questions up here. You all can't hear them, but I can hear them. They're, they're questioning whether I really got this yesterday. And I, before I even said that, these guys said, look at that old dog up there. I was hoping they were talking about the stuffed animal. So... <laughs> I'm pretty sure they were, though, for sure, for sure. So you guys think that I had, did not get this dog yesterday. What do you think? Did I get this dog yesterday? All right, Selden says, look at the fur. So, all right, this dog's like 20 years old. So how did you all, how could you tell? It looks, it looks like it's rotting. It had, well, it did come with like the little, you know, how some dogs have the spotted eye, the fur. Check that out. Do you want to rub that dog? No. How about you? No. The eyes. My favorite part, check out the tag. <laughs> yeah, no, you couldn't read that because the words have literally been rubbed off. 100%. There is not a word left on the tag. So I'll tell you a little story about what this is. This is Zachary. This one up here on the keyboard. This is his pup pup. And I did get this at Walmart, but about 20 years ago, I found this dog at Walmart. And it was at that time shiny and pretty and soft and I thought you know this looks like a really good friend for my baby son so I bought it and they became best friends Zachary took pup pup everywhere and and I, and I, I bet that's part you believe right yeah Zach 
He took him. Did he take him to college? Has Pup Pup ever been to college? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. But so, but Pup Pup does stay in his room. This was not hard to find this morning, and he is almost 20. So Zachary took Pup Pup everywhere, and he would hold him by his little hand. I would hold Zachary's hand, and he would hold Pup Pup's hand, and Pup Pup went to the store, and Pup Pup went to the grocery, and Pup Pup went to church, and Pup Pup went to daycare. We were so careful with Pup Pup that we had a fake Pup Pup, like an imposter Pup Pup that we would sub in just in case, you know, Pup Pup could not be lost. I, we weren't real sure. People looked everywhere for a new Pup Pup in case Pup Pup went missing because Zachary loved it that much and he took it everywhere with him. So Pup Pup still hangs out sometimes in Zachary's room and he surfaces every now and then and we love Pup Pup because, you know, he's been around forever. And I got to looking at Pup Pup recently and he does look pretty worn, but you can certainly tell he's super loved, right? You know, he's worn, but you can tell that worn came from being just so loved. And I got to thinking about how Pup Pup went everywhere. And I, I thought, you know, Pup Pup went everywhere, but am I taking Jesus everywhere with me? You know, am I taking Big Jesus to Walmart? to school, to, you think, well, that'd be easy to take Jesus to church, but, you know, sometimes we come and we're pretty distracted. And I got to thinking, and I told Zachary, I said, you know, we were talking about this children's sermon and kind of how, you know, taking Jesus with you everywhere, just like Pup Pup. Now, Pup Pup got kind of worn over the years, get taken everywhere, but I, one thing I wanted to point out, that Jesus can never be worn out. He can go and go and go, and we can take Jesus with us everywhere we go. And he's always there, and he's always wanting to be with us, just like Pup Pup was always wanting to be with Zachary. And then I got to looking at Pup Pup, and I don't know about you guys. You might feel a little tired. We're getting close to the end of the school year. We've got two weeks left for most of us, and we might feel a little worn like Pup Pup. And I know these big guys out here, I felt like Pup Pup on Friday afternoon. Whoo wee I felt like somebody rubbed the words off my tag all week long. <laughs> they sure did. And I got to thinking, you know what? Even though sometimes I feel like this old floppy dog here, Jesus loves me so much. 100% all the time, even when I look like this guy right here. So I wanted to show you this guy this morning. And I wanted to tell you two things. First of all, just like Pup Pup, take Jesus with you everywhere you go. Take him in your heart, take him in your mind, take him in your soul, because he is a friend to you and wants to be there to comfort you and love you, just like Pup Pup did for Zachary. And the other point is, <clears throat> when you have those days and you feel like Pup Pup yourself, just remember that even though you might feel like an old, floppy, worn-out dog, Jesus loves you very much. Just like Zachary still loves Pup Pup, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pray together this morning, guys. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you this morning for these many, many children all the way across the front of your stage, Lord. And I just thank you for the people that brought them here, Lord, that wanted them to hear about you this morning, Lord. And I just thank you that you love us and go with us everywhere, Lord, and that you were, you were our friend. You are our, our everything, 100% um, of the time, 24-7, Lord. And I just thank you for that, and I thank you for these children. In your name we pray, amen.
As long as we continue wanting more of God, that's all that matters. All right, I'm going to ask the ones that are taking up offering to come on down. And I'm going to ask Mike if he would lead us in offertory prayer.
right, we have one more song, and it's called Oh Come to the Altar. And you all, the altar is always open, but you also need to know that the altar doesn't have to be here at church at the foot of these steps. The altar can be in your car. It can be in your home. Um, it can be at the foot of your bed. It can be wherever you need Jesus at, wherever you need to be when you need to talk to him. So come to the altar. is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus
Beautiful. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Stand up. Beloved family, this is Sister Kinley, the one that y'all been praying about. And glory to God, she's right here. You want to say anything to anybody? I just want to appreciate or say I thank everybody for praying for me. And just, that's all I want to say. <laughs> she's absolutely gorgeous. Amen. Hey, a beacon of light for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, um. We want to say to Kinley, and we want to say to all of our visitors on the count of three, one, two, three, welcome home. Amen. You rock. You rock. You are awesome. You're awesome. Um, at this time, all of our children may be excused. Praise God. Man, glory be to God. Do you see all the kids that was up here? Look, look. I love this because like, my goodness, right? Um, pray for our teachers. Hallelujah. Brother BJ and Sister Ashley. And we got Cody and, and Chassie going back there as well. Oh, we got a bunch of people. Principal Sarah went back there too? Sarah's back there. Amen. Beloved family, say this with me. Value. value. Amen. Value. What is important in your life, I know this is kind of like a no-brainer, but what is important to you, what is important to you is what you hold valuable. Right? Is that safe to say? You ever see somebody with a new car? They park like three blocks down from Walmart, right? right why? Because they value that brand new car, right? They don't want nobody to don't scratch my car, right? Value. Say that again with me, value. Yes. Holy Spirit had a word, and that word value, and it's going to uh, pray for me because I'm not the teacher. He is, amen? I'm like you. I just want to worship our good and perfect Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I ask for your help in this worship. Amen. It's funny because, yes, I do feel a little bit of pressure, Pastor, because we got our pastors visiting right now. And I feel like they're judging me. Don't be crunchy. Don't be <laughs> But uh, I ask for your prayer because um, we just want to bless God as if this is it. Hey, don't you love living life like that? If you don't, hear my heart when I say that. I want to bless God right now as if this was it. You see, this is, this, this is Brother Joey now saying, I want to bless my Jesus as if this is it. Because I'm not guaranteed that next breath. So I value my breath. I value 
this moment that I have with you to worship, right? I value being a husband to, to the world's greatest wife, amen? I value pastoring, no disrespect to our other pastors, but the greatest church in all of this world, Open Arms Community Church, amen? I value, I value, and, 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 I, and I pray in Jesus' name that as we worship God, as, as, as we just get into his presence, that his value will manifest within us. Amen. I, I pray that in Jesus' name, that however we came in, regardless of what we were called to do in this vapor of a life, that, that, that we're not going to leave the same. They were going to leave in the gooder and gooder. Can I get an amen? amen. Will, you join that, will you join in that belief with me that I'm going to leave stuff here. I'm going to leave stuff here today. Praise God. Can, can, can you leave stuff here today? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you when, you, when you get a grasp through Holy Spirit and what God is going to deposit in you today, you're going to want to empty yourself completely because it's that good. Amen. So in this opening prayer, can you empty yourself? Say it with me. Lord, get rid of what doesn't belong. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we said the name above every name, and Lord Jesus Christ is all for your glory. And Father, as we value you, as we bless you, Father, we pray that, Holy Spirit, your anointing, your presence would flow like never before. Holy Spirit, we ask for your presence, your light to shine. Forgive us, Father God, when we allow veils to cover your light, when we allow unforgiveness, when we allow anxiety, worry, when we allow what we think is valuable in, in what we hold in our identity, forgive us, Father. Right now, Father God, remove every veil. You tore it, Father God, and forgive us that we, we would dare put one up. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that in this worship this morning, that you will touch the hearts of those, Father God, that are just asking for your presence, for a touch from you, Father. That you would bless minds, Father God, that seem cloudy, that seem that they're confused, that they're, they're in a season right now where they don't know what to do. I pray clarity right now, Father God, in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father God, for those, those spirits right now that are torn. That, Father God, right now in the anointing of you, Holy Spirit, that you would just declare peace over them. Right now, in Jesus' name. And all God's beloved said? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Give somebody a high five. Praise God. It's good to give somebody a high five. Amen. God give you wisdom. Why did I do that? Yeah, exactly. Kareem. Oh, bless you, Kareem. My goodness. My brother can barely blink. Knock the taste out of my mouth. So, so we, we've, dis we've discussed as far as the, the power and anointing of Holy Spirit. Um, actually, just last week, we talked about how Holy Spirit hovers, right? Beloved daughter of God, here we go. Oh, you best pay attention because we're going to do it right now. Everybody, come on, do this with me. As your hand hovers in the air, this is what Holy Spirit did when this world was dark. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. And the beauty is... Praise God, Brother Dalton. <laughs> the beauty is, is that when we do this, you know that Holy Spirit is around. See, he's God, right? We, we, we call him agape because it's a perfect love. He is love, right? The love of the Father, the love of the Son, the love of Holy Spirit. Where is Holy Spirit? Amen. So that, that's how Lord Jesus said, okay, so with this power, with this agape, with this, remember, you're like a care bear. Right? You crunchy? Poof. Right? You ain't feeling good? Poof. Right? Agape, right? That's the power of Holy Spirit. Amen? And that's why Lord Jesus Christ said, Brother Craig, in this power, you love God first, and then you love one another. Amen? How many of you love God first, and we love one another? Amen? So praise God we know this. So we're going to go into the words of Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Matthew. And then we're going to go into the book of 1 Corinthians, this book that was issued by the Apostle Paul 
in a church that was struggling. I mean, they were struggling. So it's, it's, it's very important that we capture that. And then we're going to close again in the Gospel of Matthew. Amen. Are you all excited? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Value. Value. Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Amen. When you talk about Ephesians 6, Ephesians 6 as far as the, the spiritual warfare, this is the warfare that's over your soul. The devil wants your soul. But you have Lord Jesus Christ, guess what? Like MC Hammer, you can't touch this, amen? You can't touch this, right? The blood of Jesus is applied. Say it with me, the blood of Jesus is applied. The devil's denied. Amen, put your hand out like this, amen? Ain't that the truth, right? You see, remember, you want to stop the devil, that's all you got to do. When we pray for people, right, when we got baptistries, when you, when you see somebody at the altar, what do you do when you're praying? You put your hand out, right? Why? Because you know that the power in me will flow through me, and the way it flows through me is my demonstration and worship in my body, but then I speak the sword of God, and I speak the anointing, because 2 Corinthians 4, 13 says, I believe and I speak. Hallelujah. I believe and I speak. Amen. So I'm going to believe with my heart, and I'm going to speak with my mouth. Amen. Believe and speak. Hallelujah. And so this is the war that's taking place over your soul. And praise God, Lord Jesus Christ already won. Now just to help out here. Look at that handsome young man. Don't get crunchy with me, church family. If you don't like seeing my picture up here, send me your picture. All right? Praise God we're all laughing now, okay? Because some of you are like, well, I don't want to send my picture. I'll just laugh at it. Here is the body, soul, and here is the spirit. I want to pause right here because if you notice, in 1 Thessalonians 5, God talks about you are a three-part being, and this is your being. Say with me, I am an eternal soul. Say with me, I am the body of Jesus. Say with me, I am the temple of Holy Spirit. Woo, hallelujah. This is who you are, beloved child of God. Amen. What happens if you take away the spirit? Well, Brother Joey, I like your spirit, but I don't like your body. Guess what happens to Joey? It don't work like that. You can't have two out of three. You have to have the whole three. Amen. I cannot be like, you know, TC, man, we, we're tight. I love you, brother. I just don't like your soul. Leave it over there. That's a big boy. First of all, I wouldn't talk to him like that. Right? But you don't, you don't, you, you can't do that. But isn't it amazing? In religion, that's what we've done with God. Oh, come on, family. Huh? Did we not do that with God? Oh, I want you, God, but I don't, I don't want no Jesus. That's a cult. Oh, I want you. I want you, Jesus. I want to worship you, Jesus. I want to live for you. Oh, I want to sing songs for you, Jesus. I don't want no Holy Spirit, though. Don't tell me how to live. Mm, I rebuke. Say it with that. Hey, sis, I love it how you say it, Sister Jay. Say it with some funk. I rebuke that. Amen. I love how she says that. <laughs> I'll rebuke that, right? You best rebuke that, amen, because it's a cult. It's a cult. Listen, if you want to make up your own religion, guess what? God is so merciful and good and kind and patient, he'll let you go on and make your foolish mistakes. But at the end of the day, the word of God promises, hallelujah, that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. He is the only way. Praise God. And Holy Spirit says, you want to speak in tongues? You want to speak in the spirit? You want to speak this and that? Holy Spirit says, okay, you could speak that. You know how? All you got to do is say, Jesus is Lord. If you could say that right now out of your lips, Jesus Christ is Lord. That's Holy Spirit. God Almighty speaking through you. The Bible says so. Do you believe the Bible to be true? Yeah. I believe it to be true. Amen. So check this out. Oh, it gets gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Get ready. Are you ready? Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. 
And even your very hairs on your head are all numbered, so don't be afraid. Amen? Amen? Say with me, don't be afraid. afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So the question that I have for you, beloved child of God, is this. What's your value? Are you worth, what, two sparrows? Brother Chris, are you, are you worth maybe what, um, let's see. Huh? I mean, that's the question, isn't it? Like, what is your worth? Amen. Are we, how about three sparrows? Are you worth three sparrows? One next slide. I'm going to let Brother Aaron work on that for a minute. You see, this, the, the significance of a sparrow in the old times is that someone who was hurting pastor financially or just poor, struggling, someone that didn't have any money, but they wanted to have a relationship with God, but they couldn't afford a proper sacrifice, they would buy little birds. And guess what? The religious communities and those who were well off, they would frown, insult, cuss, mock them, because look at your pitiful sacrifice. And how dare you approach God with that pitiful sacrifice. What I love when Lord Jesus Christ speaks this about a sparrow is that his heart is, is for those who wanted a relationship with God but couldn't get there because of what the law and what religion and what religious people did. Amen. You see, he made a way. He is our sacrifice. Can I get a hallelujah? And the beauty of this, this story, hallelujah, the beauty of this story is that Lord Jesus is saying, look, I know this costs a penny for two sparrows. Because I've been loving on those that that's all they can buy. So I know it costs a penny. But here Lord Jesus Christ is looking at, I, I need you to see it, family. I need you to see the mercy and grace of how God values you. And how he's looking at you right now and going, I see your heart. That this is all you can do. And then, and people would tell you that's not enough. Have you ever had somebody tell you you're not, you're not doing enough? Have you ever had somebody tell you you're not going to amount to nothing? Have you ever had somebody tell you you're going to be good for nothing? Right? It hurts, doesn't it? But here Lord Jesus Christ is saying, look at this sparrow. Father God knows. And I love this because you have no idea the multitude that he's talking to right now. But he's talking to these hurt people that I, all, I, all I can bring to you, God, is, is, is this little bird. I don't, have, I don't have enough. You see, family, don't let me fool you. I'm not worthy to stand here. I don't, I don't have what it takes to be here. But I have Jesus. Can I get an amen? And that's more than enough. Right? And so he's looking at, at, at these, these children of his. And he's saying, look, I know how much your birdie costs. But I'm here to tell you, daddy knows every one of them that fall. Every one of them that sacrifice. He hears you. I love this because this picture is saying, brother TC, it's a relationship now. And then he asks, he says, how many sparrows do you think you're worth? Right? How much are you worth? You see, how many times do we sell ourselves short because we don't measure up, right? Huh? Isn't that interesting? I could be so good. I could, I, 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 could, I could be the best that I could possibly be for God. This is between me and God now, just like it's between you and God. It don't matter if you're a teenager. It don't matter if you're older than I am. But what it boils down to is, where are you at as you sit here today with the Lord? How many? I'm going to back up for a minute. I'm going to back up for a minute. I'm going to try to at least. Baby, you keep on crying because sometimes I feel like that. Especially at Walmart. That's exactly how I feel every time I go to Walmart, just like that. Babe, but I'll tell you right now, before we hit that entrance door, Trish is like, don't you act up in this store. 
You are a pastor, act like it. There's people looking at you. But I feel just like that. You let that baby cry. It's good for a baby to cry in the, in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So here you got this picture of all these sparrows here. and There's about 20 cents on that screen. Is that how much you're worth, 20 cents? Right? Say it with me, I'm worth more. Don't sell yourself short. So I love this part. You saw the eBay logo come out. eBay, <laughs> praise God, I got delivered from it. I, I was kind of cray-cray about eBay. Seriously, cray-cray with eBay. Sister Corrine, I was just, Trish was like, you need to stay off of that now. Right? And praise God, I got delivered from it. But I was on eBay all the time, Dalton. I mean, I was on eBay constantly looking up things. Just, I wasn't even going to buy it. I just wanted to see how many people were going to bid on it. <laughs> Don't make no sense. <laughs> but what I, look at, <laughs> what I like about eBay, though, is eBay kind of tells you what it's worth. Come on, somebody. You're here, are you hearing me right now? You could pull up an item. See, I used to do a lot of um, yard selling. I used to do a lot of that. Praise God, I got delivered from it. Now hear me, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. There's some of you right now getting crunchy with me. There ain't nothing. Calm yourself down, okay? You go on to your yard sales and be blessed, all right? I'm just saying, I took it way too far. I know many of you are like, oh, of course you did. <laughs> we put up with you for four years, right? <laughs> I mean, I took it way too far, right? And, and I was one of those that I'd wait in Goodwill's um, parking lot before they opened. Those of you who laugh, you were in the parking lot too. I saw you. <laughs> Looking through the window, be like, oh man, I got to get that armoire. <laughs> a brother don't need another armoire. But the point that I'm making is, is that eBay is really good at is showing you how much things are worth. Here recently, I'm shopping for one of these things. Now, before you judge me or before you got, get all religious with me, Trish and I aren't having problems, okay? <laughs> what this is, it's a tent. It's a tent that goes over a, 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 tween, a twin bed. It's a tent that goes over a twin bed. And the reason why I'm shopping, I am. I'm shop if you have one, let me know. I'll, if you want to give it to me, praise God. But I'm looking for one of these because in, at, at, at Emmaus, I like having my privacy and I don't like sleeping on a bed where people are looking at me and, and, and I'm smelling farts and, and <laughs> he said sorry. <laughs> now, brother, <laughs> brother Craig knows that when we worked there, man, I sat up on a bunk bed and I made a little fort. I made a little fort, like a, a big tent and they, they, they called me prison break, right? <laughs> I'm just confessing, right? But then when Brother TC and I worked, I didn't have one of these, and I was uncomfortable. I, I like, listen, pray for me. Don't judge me, right? Say it with me. Don't judge him. Pray for him. Because I need the prayers, amen? But I'm looking for one of these because I think that that would make me real comfortable. Amen? You go on and snore. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you go on and, you know, and fart and whatever, but I'm in my, Amen? But then if you look at the price, it's $99. And it says buy it now for 99 bucks. Listen, don't judge me, pray for me, amen. That's a lot of money for me. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of money for me. If it ain't for you, then buy that for me. God says you don't have you don't have because you don't ask, amen. So I'm asking you, you, you if you don't think that's a lot of money, then buy that for me. But check it out. Say it with me. Buy it now. Buy. Well, a brother doesn't want to buy it now. So guess what I do? Is I shop around, and then I see this other tent. Now, <laughs> now this tent is more for like toddlers, but now I'm thinking in my head. Even though it's for toddlers and there's a little screen. I could still see people, but I'll still have a tent. Now I'm compromising because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really seem like that, that good of a thing for me, right? Because I want privacy. But check this out. It's $49. Do it with me. Ooh. Half the price, right? So it's half the price. And now check this out. You know it's not a buy it now. It's place your bid. Right? Place your bid. 
Or look at, look, look at the bottom part right there. Make an offer. I haven't made an offer yet because I'm still praying about this. But see, between these two things, Holy Spirit wanted me to show you that there's one that it's just straight up for sale, $99. And then there's another one that the seller thinks it's worth 50 bucks. And if you want it, you could place your bid. But if you don't want it, you could tell me how much you think it's worth. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me, family? I could tell the seller, I think it's worth 25 bucks. Hmm. And the seller might go, well, you know what? That sounds fair. Right? You see, I think that we go far too often in this life trying to find value in things that there are no value. I think we go far too often in life trying to find value in people, in relationships, in positions, in titles, in money. I think we go far too often trying to find value in things and then when we find that value, it becomes part of our identity. You see, the devil, he don't place no bid on your life. He puts out an offer. You know what kind of offer the devil puts on your life? Here's this crack cocaine. Why don't you go ahead and snort that? You know what? You're so pitiful and worthless. Why don't you just go keep getting high? You know what? You'll never amount to nothing. You'll never amount to nothing because all the things you done did in the past and all the people you hurt. Listen, I'm not picking on you. I'm telling you my own sins. So don't you dare sit here and start getting crunchy with me that I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. All right? So get rid of the devil and listen to what Holy Spirit has to say. Amen? Because I grew, listen, beloved family, I grew up broken. I carried that unforgiveness. And that was the devil's offer on my life. You'll never amount to nothing. You'll never go anywhere. Yeah, you just keep smoking it. Look at you. You started them gangs. They're still going on right now. They're doing horrible things to people. You did that. But praise God. Praise God that Lord Jesus Christ came into the picture. And Father God said, enough with all these offers, enough with all of these, these lowball offers that you tell him, my child, what he's worth, what she's worth. Father God, hit that buy it now button, and this is the price that he paid for you. This is your value right here. Look at that screen. Because I'm going to tell you, there ain't no boyfriend that can make you feel that good. There ain't, a, there ain't no amount of money in this world that can make you feel that good. Are you hearing me, family? Lord Jesus Christ said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy you now. And I'm going to pay it in full. And now God is asking, do you know your value? Do you know your value, beloved child of God? 1 Corinthians 6 says this, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have received from God, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Hallelujah. So my question again, beloved child of God, is how many sparrows are you worth? You know what? I'm going to be crazy enough to tell you how much I'm worth. There ain't enough birds in this world to tell you how much. Well, Brother Joey, you just being prideful. You think you're all that. You think you're so handsome. Yes, I am so handsome. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> She's still laughing. <laughs> I'm not being prideful. I'm not saying that I'm all that. I'm saying he's all that. Amen. Therefore, that's right. When the Bible says therefore, it's there for a reason. Honor God with your bodies. Honor God with your bodies. Amen. We're going to conclude with this. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. Many of you know this. 
But here our Holy Spirit's going to teach this right now. Still rocking my world right now. We're not even done reading it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of, say it with me, great value. Come on, say it again, great value. Listen, we're not even sponsored by Walmart, all right. We're not, we're not pushing great value items, okay. All right, one more time on the count of three. One, two, three, great value. This great value now, we're talking, you know what we're talking about. He went away, sold everything he had, and bought it. Beloved family, listen, there's some of you, there's some of you here this morning that you thought it was just going to be another day. You, that you thought, well, you know, I'm excited to go to church or, you know, mom and dad made me go to church again. Whatever it is, listen, yeah, Holy Spirit's talking to you. This isn't just another day. God Almighty, say it with me, God Almighty. God Almighty is calling you out. God Almighty wants to do something in you that is beyond what you can ever comprehend. You can't make sense of it, for He is God. You cannot orchestrate it. You cannot plan for it. You cannot. All God is saying is trust me. What I'm asking of you, beloved child of God, is will you trust Lord Jesus Christ in these next few moments. Amen. Everybody stand up on your feet with me. Praise God. You see, when you read this, How beautiful is it that God would call you fine pearls? And then he backs up saying, yeah, you're my fine pearls, but then you are of great value. Amen. How many of you truly feel that you are great value? And glory be to God, because not every hand went up, and I expected that, but there's some of you right now that are struggling with that. And you know this altar is always open, and we got a couple songs. But it continues on and says that God went away and he sold everything he had and bought it. What did God sell? His son. He sold, listen, heaven went bankrupt for you. This is your identity, your relationship, your power in God. Listen, there's, there's so many people that put value In their degree. I was one of those guys. Right? And then what happens when you place value in your degree? It becomes your identity. Right? You need to put doctor before your name in order to be recognized. You know what a struggle it is not to put it? May I ask you? When Holy Spirit says, stop that. You're not a doctor. You're not a PhD. You're not an engineer, you're not a mechanic, right? You're not a retail worker, you're not a nurse, you're not a doctor, you're not, you're my beloved child. Amen? Is that value right now enough for you? You saw the value of Christ. And you saw what Christ did for you. God sold everything he had to have you. Now the beauty of this, this is a double-edged sword here. Listen. Now when you read it after receiving your salvation, now God is asking, you found my Holy Spirit. Oh, through the only way, Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God is saying, will you get rid of everything and share my anointing, share my power? Share my love. Will you, fa family? We had a meeting this morning with all the overseers of the church. And Holy Spirit laid it on my heart. And I'm going to tell you as our church family, a church body. There's many of us that are going to be going through some tests here. I know pastors that are going through it right now. And all Father God wants to remind you is of your value. That no one can touch your value and your anointing. 
and that God Almighty is for you and he has gone before you in Jesus' name. So no matter if people fall to your right and fall to your left or people start cussing at you or people that you thought that you had value in and that you valued the relationship and now there's no longer a relationship because they turned your back. Father God said, don't worry about that. Just look at me, my child, because where I'm taking you is far greater than where you're coming from. Amen. I want to ask all the leadership to come up. As our overseers um, prepare their hearts at the altar and get out whatever they have to get out, pray for them. Our overseers of the church go through so much. And I pray that I don't stress them out, but pray for them. And as they're doing this, you'll find that when you come to the altar, here at Open Arms Community Church, we don't interfere with what you are doing with the Lord at this altar. Well, Brother Joey, you don't believe on laying hands? Yes, I do, but listen, don't be crunchy. When you're done praying at this altar, and Holy Spirit wants you to go to an elder, a pastor, deacon, whoever, for hands to be laid on you, they're going to be standing at the side of the altar. Amen. And they will anoint you in oil and pray for you. But I boldly declare it today, don't leave here the same. Can I get an amen? There's some of you that heard this message of value and you never seen it like that before. Guess what? It isn't me. It's all Holy Spirit and I'm barely keeping up. And praise God, I choose to be that way. Amen. I just want to worship a good and perfect God like you are right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you that I'm speaking to, that you heard this message and you know, I don't have that value in my life. If that's you that you hear this word value and you, and you say, you know what, I feel worthless so many times. I feel like I'm not worthy. Guess what, there's only one worthy one, his name is Jesus. Maybe you don't know where you're going if you took your last breath. Maybe you've been running away from Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, Holy Spirit wanted to take this time out right now. To just stop time right now. And ask you, if that is you, if that is you, beloved child of God, that some way, somehow the devil has got in and he's, he's made a muck out of you, your life, your situation. Lord Jesus Christ wants to save you right now. If that's you, will you raise your hand up high? And lift it up high. Be bold. Praise God. I see your hand, beloved daughter of God. I see your hand back there. I see your hand, beloved daughter of God. I see your hand, sis. You know, I'm so thankful for those who are so bold in the Lord that they would lift up their hands. Amen. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. So I know that there are mighty warriors in here, and the ones that raise their hands are mighty warriors. And I'm going to ask the ones that raise their hands, if you would, can you come up front? We want to make sure that this is done once and for all. Praise God. Come on. Praise God. It's all for the Lord, Sister Pia. Welcome all. Amen. Beloved family, you can stand over here. Anthony, like, Anthony likes to come up every time. Come over here, sis. Amen. Pray with them as they pray this prayer of salvation. Amen. And I, I believe and declare right now, Holy Spirit fire is going to anoint them and bless them. Any available elder, uh, deacon, whatever, can you anoint our beloved daughters right here in oil? And uh, we're going to say this prayer together. I'm going to wait for them to anoint you. Holy Spirit, just stop real quick and they're going to anoint you in oil. So you come up. And remember the power that you display 
in the body of Lord Jesus Christ as you extend your hand and you speak. I encourage you to speak this prayer with me. We're all going to say this as one body in Christ as we all join together. Are you all ready? Say amen. Amen. You ready, beloved? Praise God. Pray this with me. Say with me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. And I know. And I know. The only way. The only way. Is through you. Is through you. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive me. Forgive me. Be one in me. Be one in me. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Seal me. Seal me. With your breath. With your breath. Your light. Your light. Your presence. Your presence. Your peace. Your peace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's beloved said, Amen. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Fire. God moves on your heart. Come up to the altar. Praise God.